Hey everybody, good morning. It's Tina here with our Blessed and Beautiful Life. I am in the kitchen and I'm gonna make some yogurt this morning. So this is a video that I have been wanting to um, do with you guys because yogurt is one of my favorite things. And with the farm and having all that fresh milk that we had, um, we had to find creative ways to use it. So, um, so little Parker, Little Parker is still asleep. He should actually be rolling out of bed here any minute, but um, I am just drinking my coffee. And which cup do I have today? Oh look, best teacher ever. Whoop whoop, that's me. Um, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. So I probably don't need to tell you, if you guys have clicked on this video, um, raw milk yogurt uh, with an Instapot, you probably have an Instapot, um, or maybe you're just trying to figure out how to make raw milk yogurt. So I just wanted to chat with you for a quick second about raw milk yogurt, because you guys, I struggled. I mean, the struggle was real, okay, to make raw milk yogurt. Raw milk yogurt is just different than regular yogurt. Um, it's gonna have a different consistency than the yogurt that you buy in the store most of the time. So I have literally spent probably um, a couple of years trying to figure out how to thicken raw milk yogurt. And you guys can go online and Google that and you'll see what I'm talking about. There are just so many people that are like, how do I make it thicker? Um, I have tried everything under the sun. I have tried um, gelatin. I have tried pectin, like fruit pectin, which you use for canning. Um, I have tried everything to thicken my raw milk yogurt. And I could never get it the consistency that we wanted it. I personally don't mind my yogurt being a little bit runnier because I eat it over um, fruit or I would put it in a smoothie, but Joe is very picky about his yogurt. He, it's like this perfect texture that he likes and I could just never get it there. So for me, um, loving to do all my DIY stuff in the kitchen and my love language being that I love to do these things for my family, um, it's been frustrating to me that I could never get it right because I wanted to make him yogurt. I wanted him to eat my yogurt, not the yogurt from the store. Um, so I have a really cool thing to share with you guys later on in the video about how I have found the best way to thicken my raw milk yogurt. And once I finally discovered this, I felt so ridiculous. I'm like, oh my gosh, I spent all this time and all this money and all these things to try to add to my yogurt to make it thick. And this one simple thing, it's like magic. So I cannot wait to show that. Um, so, all right, let me turn you guys around and just show you what we're going to be using today for our recipe. So here's the um, Instapot. We're gonna use the Instapot today for this recipe. And then you're gonna need a half gallon of raw milk. And you can tell that it's raw because it has not been, um, it's not homogenized. You still have the cream line with the milk down here. So you've got that delicious sweet cream in there. And we're also gonna be using um, honey to sweeten our yogurt later on in the video. And we'll talk a little bit more about sweeteners later on too. And then you're gonna need some uh, store-bought yogurt for your culture. Now, you guys, there are so many different ways to do this, and this is just the way I do it, so there's no right or wrong way to do it. You just need a good culture um, to make yogurt properly. So if you're gonna use yogurt from the store, you wanna make sure that you use a good brand, like this is non-GMO. This is one of my favorites that I use. And the most important thing, if you look on the back, of the ingredients. Um, you guys probably can't see that, but it says live active yogurt cultures, and then it lists out what those cultures are. So not all yogurts from the grocery store have live active cultures, and you need live active cultures as your starter. Um, if you're like me, when I was when I first started with yogurt, and even now, really, I'm kind of like, what's the purpose of you know doing this if I still have to use something from the store? I want something I can do from home and continue to repeat it and repeat it. Um, and and then you can do that once you get that first batch of homemade yogurt. Then you just save a little bit out of each batch so that the next time you go to make your yogurt, um, you can just use your own culture that you've already created from your first batch of yogurt. And just keep in mind that that's only going to be good for so long. So um, 
you know, you can't leave it in the fridge for months and then expect to use it later for another batch of yogurt. It needs to be kind of a consistent rotation. So I just got this Instapot about six months ago. And you guys, it's been a game changer for me as far as making yogurt. Making yogurt can be tedious and a lot of people shy away from it, especially with raw milk yogurt. Um, and just for those of you that don't know, raw milk yogurt is uh, milk, raw milk, excuse me, raw milk is straight from the cow and it is not pasteurized. So it comes from the cow and it might go through a simple filter uh, just to make sure there's no hair or hay in the milk. But raw milk is straight from the cow, not pasteurized. This is a very controversial topic, I realize that. But again, there's no right or wrong way to do it. There are opinions on both sides as to um, raw milk versus pasteurized milk. For my family, personally, the research I've done, um, I really truly feel that raw milk is the best for you and it is the best for your gut because it is loaded with um, probiotics and enzymes and all of these wonderful, wonderful things for your gut health. So that's my piece on that. Um, but I, you know, with yogurt, you, you've got to warm the milk. So the Instapot has been amazing. The Instapot actually has a yogurt making setting on it. So that's been really cool. However, I do want to say that I am going to make another video. So this is going to be how to make raw milk yogurt with an Instapot. And then I'm going to do one for how to make raw milk yogurt if you don't have an Instapot. Because not a lot of people have Instapots and some people can't afford an Instapot. So that was me up until six months ago when I bought this thing so I want to teach you guys also how I may I've been making raw milk yogurt for the past few years and it's it's still pretty simple um, just to share really quick this is one of my favorite books and I use this for my yogurt making the art of natural cheese making. So this book has been phenomenal. Um, I've gotten cheese recipes out of here and everything else. He has a great yogurt recipe in here and this is the recipe that I follow as far as how much milk, how much culture, how long to let it um, incubate for. And um, I just wanted to share that with you. This is a great source for a good yogurt recipe. So what we're gonna do now is just put the um, milk into the Instapot. But we're gonna warm the milk on the saute setting until we reach 185 degrees. And we're gonna whisk the milk gently and make sure that you continue to stir it while it's warming up so that it doesn't burn to the bottom of your Instapot. You're gonna give your um, milk a good shake because you've got all that yummy, delicious cream that has separated. And then I'm just gonna hit the saute button. So, all right, you guys, it's been a few minutes, so I'm gonna come over and just give this a little stir and check the temperature. And you can see the steam coming off, so this is heating up nicely. Now, for your thermometer, I just have a simple kitchen thermometer, nothing fancy. So let me check this temperature and see where we're at. So funny, um, funny story. I was making cheese one time and <laughs> I didn't realize that I was checking the temperature in Celsius. Um, okay, so we're at about 137 degrees. So we've got a little bit further to go. Um, I didn't realize I was checking the thermometer with um, Celsius. And so, and so I ended up over, overheating the milk. It was ridiculous. I heated the milk for so long. I'm like, why isn't the temperature you know, getting where I need it to be. And then I realized that I should have, you know, been looking at Fahrenheit. Um, and I know you can like convert, um, but yeah, we're not, I'm not there yet. I haven't learned that yet in my homeschool, so. <laughs> okay, so we're back. Our milk has reached 185 degrees. So what I um, am gonna do now is you're gonna let the milk cool to 110 degrees. Um, if it's any hotter than that and you put your culture, your yogurt in here, it could kill that culture. And so you wanna make sure that you get it down to around 110, 115 degrees. What I like to do is just get a bowl and put some ice in it and put some water in it. So um, you can just set it on the counter and let it cool um, naturally. I like to speed the process along a little bit because I've gotta get school going. So I do put it in a bowl of ice water 
and just continue to stir it a little bit and check back every few minutes. And once it reaches 110, then we'll go ahead and add our culture to it. All right, so our yogurt has um, dropped down to about 110, 113 degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in my culture. So for the store-bought yogurt that I showed you earlier, um, this recipe that I'm using from the cheese book calls for a quarter cup of yogurt for every quart jar. So being that we had a half gallon, I'm going to add a half a cup of yogurt um, culture to my milk. And you're gonna give it a good stir because you wanna really get that culture mixed around in that milk really good. All right, so my culture is good and mixed into the milk. And all we're gonna do is put the stainless steel bowl back into the Instapot. Um, just a couple notes, so you don't need your silicone liner in your Instapot when you're making your yogurt because we're not gonna seal this. We're not pressure canning or anything like that. Um, and as you guys know, if you have an Instapot, this can put funky flavors into your yogurt because if you make like beef stew or chicken or broccoli, sometimes these silicone liners hold on to that flavoring. Um, so you don't want that um, going into your yogurt. I, I love chicken, but I don't want chicken yogurt. So take your liner off, um, you don't need that. When you add your Instapot lid, it's gonna give you that nice little song that tells you that it's on correctly. Um, you do not need this to be sealed. So we're gonna leave this button set to vent um, because again, we're not pressure canning it. We're just using this amazing little machine to incubate our yogurt. Here's the thing when you're doing yogurt. Um, if you've got a good culture in your yogurt, it will set, it should set within like four to eight hours. You can continue to incubate it longer if you wish. Just keep in mind that the longer you keep it at that temperature, the more tangy and tart your yogurt is gonna be. Some people like that, um, but I find at about six to eight hours, my yogurt sets and I like it just like that and it tastes absolutely delicious. You can remove this lid during this process to check your yogurt to see if it's set. You just wanna do that quickly. So at about six or seven hours, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna just check the consistency of the yogurt. And if it's done, I'm gonna show you guys what that looks like. So this is it, you guys. I'm gonna set it and forget it and I'm gonna go do school with Parker and then I will check back with you guys a little bit later on today. Guys, we are back and I'm done with school and so it is about time for the yogurt to be done. Now this has only been in the Instapot for almost six and a half hours. So let's take a look. Okay, let's see. Now you can see that texture that is definitely set. It's no longer liquid like milk. Do you see that? So this is ready to go, awesome. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna transfer my yogurt into a blender. Add my honey as my sweetener. This is some fresh backyard beehive honey from our bees um, and I am super excited because I we just have so much of it so it's really nice to be able to use the honey from our own hives that's kind of cool but you can sweeten your honey or sweeten your honey sweeten your yogurt with whatever you want you can use um, honey you can use stevia you can use um, all kinds of stuff and also you guys remember you can add um, fruit to your yogurt you can literally chop up some fresh strawberries or some fresh peaches blueberries anything like that and you can put it right into this blender with your yogurt and mix it right up and it's going to be delicious it's going to be better than store-bought yogurt i promise you so i'm going to get this put into the blender and then i'll show you what i do next Now, you don't have to put this in a blender. You could literally put this in just a mason jar and stick it in your... <laughs> you know what, I'm not even gonna edit that out. I'm not, because that is just what happens sometimes. <laughs> okay, we're just gonna keep on rolling. All right, so what I was saying is, however, I am gonna do this a little bit more gently. And that is just showing you guys what I'm talking about. The raw milk yogurt is runnier than store-bought yogurt. 
Um, but you could put this in a jar and stick this right into your fridge and eat it just like this. Of course, this is not sweetened, so this would be a plain yogurt, but you don't have to mix it in the blender if you don't want to. I personally like to mix it in the blender because it mixes together all of the chunks with the liquid and it gives it that really smooth, like velvety texture, which is what I like to have in my yogurt. So I'm just gonna eyeball this. I like to just um, put some honey in there and then once it's done blending, I'll double check it and taste it. And if it tastes good, then I don't need to add any more. All right, so the one thing I did forget to mention when I shared the ingredients with you this morning is um, I do put vanilla in my yogurt. So again, you don't have to do that. You can sweeten it and flavor it however you want. Um, I'm just making a you know, sweetened vanilla yogurt that will go perfect with granola, um, with some strawberries, something like that, thrown into a smoothie. So I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of vanilla. And again, you can add as much or as little as you want. But I find for a half gallon of yogurt that a tablespoon of vanilla is usually perfect. What I like to do is pour my yogurt into a jar and stick this in the fridge for a couple of hours and it's gonna allow it to thicken up and then I'm gonna show you guys my secret weapon, um, my awesome little thing that I found that helps me really thicken up my raw milk yogurt. All right, so grab a little funnel so I don't make a mess again. And I'm just gonna put this in the jar. I'm gonna stick this in the fridge for a little bit and then we'll be back in a little while. All right, you guys, welcome back. So I have put my jar of yogurt in the fridge for about two hours. Um, I just started prepping dinner and just kind of stuck it in there. There goes the dog. I'm telling you, it's like he knows when I get on the phone or when I start recording. Ugh. Anyway, but you miss them when they're gone, right? So this has been in there for a couple hours. I wanna show you guys how much this has thickened up just from being in the fridge for a couple of hours. And earlier I told you that you could put this in the fridge and eat it as is. You don't have to do anything else with this. Once your yogurt is done incubating and you flavor it and you sweeten it, or whatever you wanna to do to it, add fruit to it, you can put it in the fridge and eat it as is. I just like to do a couple extra steps for the texture and the consistency that we like as a family. So let me show you up close what this looks like because I don't think that you can see from far away, but what I'm gonna show you is there is um, a liquid down here that has separated at the bottom of the jar, and that's the whey. You guys have heard um, curds and whey. This will naturally um, separate if you just give it some time to set. You guys may recognize um, when you buy store-bought yogurt that there's like a runniness on the top of it. That's whey, and you always mix it in, right? Well, it's the same thing with this. So I just like to strain all of this out as much as I can to make my yogurt even thicker. So you can see that right there. Um, and if I leave this sitting in the fridge a little bit longer, I might end up with a little bit more of like a whey line. Um, but you can see very clearly at the bottom, this yellow that is nothing but liquid. So I don't want that liquid in my yogurt because it makes the yogurt even runnier. Now, I'm really excited to share this with you guys. And those of you that might be like yogurt experts, you're gonna laugh at me and I'm okay with that. I've been laughed at before. Ask cool um i'm gonna take my slippers off it's a little hot in here you guys it was 70 degrees today oh my gosh so i'm having a great day i've got homemade yogurt and spring is upon us and parker and i decided to take language arts outside and we just did a little nature walk and he jumped on the trampoline and then we did language arts on the patio and it was awesome so um I want to share with you what I told you earlier, my little magical secret to thickening your raw milk yogurt. Um, it's really not a secret. Like apparently there's like a whole bunch of people that know about it, but I was left in the dark. So um, it is this bad boy right here. Look at that. This my friends is called a yogurt strainer. I never knew there was anything like it. So you could use like a, um, a really nice tea towel 
to put your yogurt in and tie it and hang it on your cupboard and have a bowl underneath and let the whey drip out that way. You know, think of like the olden days. They didn't have these nifty little contraptions to drain the whey. Um, and you guys have probably seen in my dream cheese video, that's what I did to get all of the whey out of the cheese. I hung it from my cupboard handle with tea cloths and I let it drain into a bowl. So if you don't have, you know, extra money to go buy things like this on Amazon, don't fret because there are some old Ma Engel type ways of making things happen. But I got this on Amazon. It was fairly inexpensive, I don't know, $30, something like that. But it's just a um, yogurt strainer. It's got a very thin metal strainer uh, a screen here. And you're going to dump your yogurt into this strainer. And then you're going to put the lid on it, this lid. And you're going to put it in your fridge anywhere from two to five hours. Um, the first time I ever used this, I was like, okay, um, five hours, sure. I'm just going for the gusto and I want it super thick. And I stuck it in there for five hours and when I pulled it out, um, it was like really thick. It was almost cream cheesy consistency, which is too thick for me when it comes to a yogurt. So I told myself, okay, next time I'm gonna do like two or three hours. Two to three hours in the fridge and this yogurt strainer for me and my family is like the perfect consistency. And what you'll see over time is all of the whey is gonna drip down to the bottom of this container and you can just discard the whey or you can feed it to your chickens, use it for baking, freeze it for baking, whatever you wanna do. Um, use it in your garden, it's a great, it's a great thing for your garden. Um, but yeah, it separates the whey and you can discard the whey and then all you're left with is this beautiful, um, nice, thick, yet silky yogurt. So it's amazing. So let's get started. I'm going to dump this yogurt in here and see if I cannot make a mess this time. And you're gonna see um, from earlier, remember I showed you how runny this was. Like even from after I mixed it in the blender um, with the honey and the vanilla and I poured it into this jar, it was almost as runny as the milk was earlier. But look how much thicker this is already just from sitting in the fridge. You see that? That's already so much thicker than it was earlier. So now we're gonna just dump this in here Okay, after you get your yogurt in, you just pop your lid on there. Simple as that. Okay, you guys, so we are back for the final round of our yogurt making for today. And the yogurt has been in the yogurt strainer in the fridge for three hours. I've got some jars out here. I have 10 of these um, half pint jars. I think these are half pints, they're the little ones. Um, and I like to use these for when I make homemade applesauce and homemade yogurt. They are like the perfect ser serving size for yogurt. As you can see, we have quite a bit of whey in the bottom of this yogurt strainer. You're going to remove the mesh strainer from the inside. And I'm just going to funnel all of this whey into this jar, and tomorrow I will feed it to the chickens. Now with this yogurt strainer, it's really easy. You just set the lid on top of the strainer basket, and then we're just gonna flip it over. Just like that. and voila and we'll use a spatula to get out the excess yogurt <laughs> parker's sitting at the table finishing his dinner and he's like standing in his chair watching this happen it's quite exciting all right so look at this yogurt you guys i mean look at so i've got parker here and he's helping me put the lids on all of our little jars this is kind of like mine and parker's thing when I was going through my um, two years of experiments with yogurt, he was the only one in the family that was willing to experiment and try it. And it was like, it didn't matter how awful it was, you guys, he ate it. And he was always like, mama, that's so good. And 
he would have me add more honey and put it over strawberries and he's always um you're always the one that makes me feel good about all my uh, diy projects aren't you buddy <laughs> All right, so this is amazing. Look at that. If I could focus in on what I'm trying to show you guys. But do you remember how runny that was when we started? Look at that. Mm -hmm. It's just velvety, it's smooth, and it's all one texture, and it's just flavored perfectly. Um, and this is one of the reasons, you guys, why I like to blend my yogurt in a blender. You don't have to, like I said, but if you don't, you're gonna have kind of like that chunkiness that you saw when I poured it into the blender, which is why it splashed up on my shirt. So blending it just blends all of the ingredients together really good, and you end up with this amazing product. And look at Parker. He's already got the honey out. <laughs> because he knows he wants more honey. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up. That way I know um, if you enjoy this content, I will continue doing it. Um, and if you're new and you have not subscribed to our channel, I would love for you to subscribe and join along with our family. We love to have you here. Do you have anything that you want to say to our friends? I love you guys. <laughs> Lots of love, plenty of love to go around. All right, Parker, well, you've been waiting patiently. So here's your jar of yogurt. Yeah, I'll put some honey in there. All right, guys, see you next time.